But if you pick up the Bible, in the complete Bible, the word Trinity is not mentioned anywhere. If you read this big encyclopedia, it is more than twice the size of the Quran. Actually, you know, this is in small writing. This is along with Arabic and English and commentary. The Bible actually is twice the size, more than twice the size of the glorious Quran. Nowhere will you find the word Trinity. Nowhere. The closest verse that any Christian can come to regarding the concept of Trinity is from the first epistle of John, chapter number 5, verse number 7, which says, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. The closest verse regarding Trinity, first epistle of John, chapter 5, verse 7. And if you read the Revised Standard Version, this is the King James Version, which I was showing, which is the most popular. This is the Revised Standard Version. Brother, I want to know which version. I'm even answering you, two in one. I'm trying my level best in five minutes' time. RSV, Revised Standard Version, a new version. Version means the authentic source differs. And the Christian boasts of 24,000 manuscripts of the Bible, but no two are identical. This is the new King James Version, which Pastor refers to. This is the Douay Version, which has 73 books. They have thrown out six books out of this, which the Catholics refer to as a fabrication. Who has done that? The Protestants. Pastor of the Bible is the New King James Version, has only 66 books. It's a different Bible. There are various Bibles, various. In IRF, we have more than 25 different versions, more than 200 different types of Bible. You can come and refer to IRF. Coming back to your question. In the Revised Standard Version, which has been revised by 32 scholars of the highest eminence, backed by 50 different Christian corporate denominations, they said that the King James Version has got grave defects. And when they revised this, they have thrown this verse, which is the closest resemblance to Trinity, First Epistle of John, chapter 5, verse number 7, as a fabrication, as a concoction, as an interpolation. They thrown it out. Who? Not Muslims, not Hindus, 32 Christian scholars of the highest eminence, backed by 50 different corporate denominations. They have thrown this verse, which is the closest resemblance Trinity, as a fabrication. The word Trinity doesn't exist. Jesus Christ, peace be upon never claimed divinity, as I mentioned earlier. And in the Catechism of the Church, they say, the Father is a person, the Son is a person, and the Holy Spirit is a person. But they aren't three persons, they are one person. Person, 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 but not three person, one person. What is this? One plus one plus one is three, but the Christian says one. And if you ask the Christian that when you think about the Father, what is the mental picture you draw? And a Christian, you draw the mental picture, like Almighty God, like Santa Claus sitting in heaven with the earth as footstool. When he says the word or the son or Jesus peace be upon him, somewhat like Jeffrey Hunter in the movie King of Kings. Jeffrey Hunter, blonde hair, white, doesn't look like a Jew, he doesn't have polyp nose, but like Jeffrey Hunter. And when they speak about the spirit, something like a dove that came when John the Baptist was there, was baptizing, or like the smoke at the Feast of Pentecost. Three different pictures. But when you ask the Christian, how many pictures do you see? He tells you one. However much you try, you can never impose these three pictures as one. But when you ask them how many pictures, they say one. They are lying to you. Because one plus one plus one is three. It is not one. And they give the example. that see. The concept of Trinity is very difficult to understand. A person can be a father, can be a brother, and can be a businessman at the same time. So why can Almighty God be Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? I said, fine. Let's analyze the example. Suppose there's a person who's a father and a brother and a businessman. Suppose the sister goes and says something to the brother, a secret. But natural, even the father and that person will know it. Even the businessman will know. But if you read the Bible, on the Gospel of Mark, chapter number 13, verse 32, it says, Yes, peace be upon him. Says that of that day, of that hour, knoweth no man, knoweth no angel, not even the son, but the father in heaven. That means of the day of judgment, even Jesus Christ doesn't know, even the angel doesn't know, even the spirit doesn't know, only Almighty God knows. That means they aren't three in one. They aren't three in one. The Trinity is the concept which is illogical. 
How much you try, you cannot superimpose. Suppose they say that Jesus Christ peace be upon if I agree with them, died on the cross. Do you mean that even God died on the cross? We would uh, request, as we are allowing the questioners to ask any odd question he wants to ask, we would request them to bear with whatever answer is given by the speakers on my right and left, Pastor Rockney and Dr. Zakir. Whether you like it or not, they have a right to answer in the manner they would like to. Even if they refuse to answer, if they refuse to present any answer, they have a full right for it. That is the decision. Even if they don't answer, they have a full right for not answering. Let the whole audience be the judge. You can discuss the details after the program. May we have the next question from the ladies for Pastor Rockney. Uh, Pastor I, would ex I would exhort your patience, please. The speakers as well as the audience. Uh, in the beginning of your talk, you said that uh, the evil... Uh, is actually uh, taken out by man himself. It's not given by God. But then, according to the theory of original sin, you say that uh, the man is born with the sin. So don't you think it's a contradiction? Can you please clarify it? Yeah. Uh, man has inherited not sin, but the nature of sin. Okay? That means, man has inherited the tendency of sinning but suppose a baby dies what happens he's innocent he'll go straight to heaven that's what I believe okay but the baby is not going to pay for the price for his daddy and his all that you know uh, because as uh, brother Zakir uh, referred uh, from the Bible is correct he's not responsible for his father's fault as far as sin and punishment in hell is concerned okay uh, so Nature of sin, I inherited from my father Adam. I sin because I'm a sinner. Understand? Sinner means nature wanting to do wrong things because of that's, a, uh, that's what I inherited. Okay? Not the. Uh, so when man starts sinning himself, then it's counted against him himself. So that resolves the problem of. Now, second thing, man does inherit curses. There is sin and there is curses. Bible indirectly and direct various places. I'm not good time to talk about it. I don't pay for the sin of my father, but I do inherit curses, and you experience it in your life. My father did a lot of mess, but he died now. Thank God, he died a believer. But I suffer today because of a lot of wrong things he did. I inherit it. No, not 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 my accountability to God as a sinner. Not my accountability to God as a sinner. Okay? But he did a lot of things which is sinful. And it happens that today I am facing a lot of difficulties in life. It's a curse. It's a curse. So distinguish between sin and a curse. Distinguish between sin and a curse. Curse is a harm as a result of sin. It's the damage which sin does. Okay? So there is two things Christ can do to my life. Number one, he, he obtained forgiveness of sin for me. So I will not be accountable to God. I am forgiven my sin. Number two, he breaks the curse of my life. That's what the Bible says. Not only he is having authority on earth to forgive sins, but he also took my cur curse upon himself. He became a curse on my behalf. The, whatever curse was supposed to be mine, you believe in him, the curse is start breaking from your life. Curses start breaking from your life. So you distinguish there is sin and there is curse. Two, two different things. I hope I have answered properly. I hope. Well, at least I've cleared. I hope Mention you understand. Yes. yes, brother. Question for Dr. Zakir. Uh, Dr. Zakir Naik, you... Your name, please. My name is Richard. Huh? I'm a Bible student, Bible lover, and also a fitter by trade. I'm a technician. Uh, you refer to the Bible speaking about Jesus saying that they will be like angels, you know, spirit body, like spiritualized. Also you said in the Bible there is no way mentioned, no, nowhere mentioned about the resurrection. All right. I will quote just one and many other. 
This is Matthew 16, verse 21. It says, From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. And this he does three times and all the gospels mention it. Not only so, the Bible speak about how he's hang on the cross for six hours, gave up his ghost. After crying, Allah, 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 Samatani, how I got, why is of fulfilling the scriptures? Then we see all the four gospels mention about his death, about his burial and resurrection. Now, you say Jesus cannot lie with respect to you know, the spiritualizing of the body, which is another topic. Glorified body is different, a spiritual heavenly body is different. We were better than angels, today we are worse than animals. So how does this come, come about to be? In fact, I'm not having a discussion. I'm a, I've learned by God's love and mercy. And I've got the answers to all your 14 points. And I would like to come to Islamic Research Foundation and give you these answers biblically, not to win an argument. Huh? I, would, I would love to. Because I've got... It's true that Trinity is not in the Bible. It's not this... But Jesus Christ being divine, I can let you know scripturally and even your conscience, even the whole creation will back. I give you, today I brought many things in the Bible. What the original, there is a numeric, there is a mathematics in the Bible, which can, it, it's, a, it's a perfect, it's a proof. So, uh, I've got these things so everyone can avail of them. Mathematics main, proving scripture. Main question. So, please, please. No, this is my question. That how Jesus Christ mentioned many times that he will be killed and he will be rising again. Uh, again, if you want another quote, I will give. In no. chapter uh, 20, verse 19, it shall, And shall deliver him to the Gentiles to be mocked and scourged and shall crucify him and the third day shall rise again. Okay, okay. Just few, few. Just few. No problem. The question is complete? Yeah, I'm, I gave a little, no I gave you a little boost no, no, so that I can come time. and share yeah. with you and also we to the audience that, you know, Bible has all the answers, every not Sunday, the religions. Every Sunday we have program at IRF at Dongdish, you can get the address. Every Sunday? Every Sunday, 10.30. And after the talk is over, you can ask any questions. That's You good. can even criticize Quran. You can even, no, I'm just telling you, we love it. We love it. We like to discuss no, in I, friendship for better understanding. The Bible. Brother, you can even ask on the Bible, no problem. Not ask, I will tell you on the Bible. Yes, most welcome. Like you told me just now. Yeah. Brother said, he quoted from the Gospel of Matthew. And he quoted, what he quoted? Jesus said he will die and he will rise. He said that, I agree. Even we agree, he will die and he will rise. In his second coming, he will die and he will rise. And that resurrection in the second coming, which is mentioned in the Quran and the Bible, will be the true resurrection. True death and true resurrection. What you are saying, that what was put on the cross, he died. You say that, from your side it is. But when you check, I do know some people say, oh we saw him dead, the soldier says. If you read, again, Gospel of John, chapter 19. I'll give you quotation. Gospel of John, chapter 19, verse 33. We saw him to be dead. Like how pastor saw the girl to be dead. He's not expert, he said. Like a layman. So even the soldier, like a layman, saw him to be dead. Today, to testify he's dead, doctor requires telescope, he requires the pulse, we have machines like ECG, EEG, heartbeat, brain, and yet doctors make mistakes. Here what I've got with me. So many articles that a person died for three hours and then he got back to life. Three days, several in South Africa, in Philippines, all these cases. Doctor testifying with instrument, with instrument. Here a soldier layman testifies. That doesn't mean he's dead. Please let me complete the answer. Then you can, you can go back to the queue and ask any question. Now come on Sunday. So, it was from hearsay. Whether he died or not, actually, I proved 14 points. You said you can answer all. You haven't answered a single. He was alive, he was alive, he was alive. That means he was not resurrected. He will be resurrected, I believe. Every Muslim believes. In the second coming when he comes, he will be resurrected. And the Quran says, in Surah Maida chapter number 5, verse number 116 and 117, he says that, O oh God, you be the witness. I never told them to worship me as Almighty God. But I said, Abdullah, worship Allah, Rabbi wa Rabbukum, who is my Lord and your Lord. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he preached nothing but what Almighty God wanted. And he preached that you should worship only one God, not worship him. And I said that earlier, there is not a single unequivocal statement. You said there are statements in the Bible saying Jesus was divine. There is not a single unequivocal statement. In the complete Bible, 
May Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says there is God, or where he says, worship me. Yes, he will come again. He will come again. For what? The Quran says, in Surah Nisa, chapter 4, 158, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised him up unto himself. He was raised up alive. For what? In his second coming, he will not teach anything new. The Quran says in Surah Maida, chapter 5, verse number 3, Islam, on this day have I chosen for you your religion. And chosen for you Islam. I have completed your faith for you. Nothing new can be taught. He will be coming in the second coming, not to teach anything new to the Muslims. He will be coming in the second coming to testify that I never said you worship me. To testify that I never claim divinity. And as it's mentioned in the Gospels also, in the second coming, people will say, Oh Master, Oh Master, did we not do wonders and miracles in your name? So Jesus will tell them, Ye men of iniquity, ye sinful people, you depart from here. I don't even know you. Who will he tell that? To Muslims? To Hindus? To Christians? You are claiming you did miracles in my name? You get out from here. I don't even know you. He will come in the second coming. And that time, as the Quran says in Surah Al-Imran, chapter 3, verse 185, Every soul shall have a taste of death. He will die like a human being. And then, inshallah, he will be resurrected. We are waiting for that. Before the day of judgment, he will surely do that. Hope that answers the question. Yes, brother. Brother Pista, I have a, I have a question for you. For Muslims, it are, there are four to five major criteria which he has to fulfill to enter into Jannah. But as given to understand, even from your talks and even from the neighbors, I have heard that for being a Christian, to, uh, since the Christians are sinless, sinless in the sense they'll be wiped up, uh, they'll be, their sins will be wiped out because of the sins which are inherited, which are taken or uh, by Jesus. So that means that that means that uh, if a person today, tonight, if he accepts that Christ has died on the cross for the sins of the mankind, does it mean that his sins, past and future, are wiped out and he will enter into the gates of heaven? Yes. Uh, it is written in the Bible, if you believe in Christ, of course, you believe in Christ means what he did and what he taught, and you confess him, you say it, confess me, use your tongue, say it, that means you receive him genuinely in your heart, uh, then your sins are forgiven and your des uh, so my, my interpretation it means this your destination is changed you are not in heaven at that moment a small question relating yeah. to the same yeah. now that means if I read the bible I believe in each and every word of the bible I believe in the death of the Christ the crucifixion the so called crucifixion then tomorrow I, be uh, I become a rapist or I become a terrorist and I go and killing everyone still I will be entering Jannah you see uh, <laughs> If you, if you have genuinely believed in Christ today, you will not be a rapist tomorrow. <laughs> Why not? It is always possible. It your is always life will be so changed, See, the thing is that means you are lying, you did not receive Jesus. The thing is, there is only one single statement which shows that you have to believe in Christ, that he died for the cross, that he died on the cross and died for the sins of the mankind. That is the only criteria which I know. Even in your talk, you have said the same thing. If you believe in Jesus... Your faith is interpreted acts of faith according to the book of James, Yaqub. If your faith is not counterfeit, not pretending, your faith will produce things in your life. But if your faith is a counterfeit, just to, uh, just to show, then your faith will not produce acts of faith. So suppose I'm a criminal today. Hmm? I believe in Jesus, I repent, I ask forgiveness of sins. All these things comes in believing in Jesus. Repentance means I have changed, I turn my way, I'm no more wanting to walk the way of sin. Then God will help me and I will succeed, not following that old way of living. My life is changed. Now I may commit mistakes. That doesn't mean I have abandoned the faith. A small baby, he loves his daddy. Still occasionally he disobeys daddy. There is a level of disobedience. Okay? There is a level of disobedience and there is a level of rejection and rebellion. So, if I summarize it, if I believe in Jesus today, I repent, ask God forgiveness. God will break my sins if I have genuinely, not just pretending. He knows the secret. I'm saying it in words or not. And then, uh, that will produce things in my life. I, I was in Kuwait. There were many people who were playing in words in Islam. And one person, he uh, confessed that he is Muslim and he said, Allah, 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 Allah. So, uh, because he wanted to take the custody of the children from his wife. 
so somebody ta- taught him the trick. If you say that, then the uh, Sharia will say, the children belongs to you because your wife is Christian, so therefore they, they'll be in your favor. He did so. He did so. Then they told the mullah, uh, who was a judge, he's just saying, la ilaha illallah, he doesn't mean it. He said, no, 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 only God knows the intentions. But he said it, we heard it, it's a proof he's a Muslim. Only God knows the intention. That was, he was just playing games and words. You know, really, he wanted to take custody of the children. Now, in the Christian faith, God knows whether you are genuine or not. If you really believed in Jesus, God will break sin over your life. He's done it, their drug addicts are broken. Even medical couldn't help them, but they succeeded. There is an organization called Teen Challenge. They got such a big percentage of success. Even the best rehabilitation for drug addicts, they never succeeded. They only get 2%, 3%, and the boys go back, and the boys go back, and the boys go back. These people successfully, people for years, they broke with drugs because they're basing on help, helping the children on the basis of faith in Christ. Christ is a practical solution, not just a religion, a nice fancy drawing, and some lovely book with a little bit of colors and all that. Christ is practical for a daily living. Yes, May we have the next question from the ladies, Dr. Zakir. Any question for Pastor Rockney from the ladies? Yes. If we were accountable to God for our sins, then why should Jesus be crucified for us? See, why, oh, sorry. why uh, will the God punish? question is for Pastor Rockney. Yes. Yes. Why will God punish Jesus, Jesus for our sins? If we are accountable to our sins, why should Christ die for us? Right. And the second part, please repeat the second part. Why will God punish Jesus for our sins? No. See, uh, 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 the, the law exposes sin. That is the law of Moses before Jesus. He tells you the standards of God, expectation for man. Basically, he tells me how, sin, how, sin, how sinful I am. Okay? So, really sin has no remedy. As far as human is concerned, there is no remedy. And the law of Moses is a confirmation, sin has no remedy. Whatever you try, you'll fall again. Now, Jesus came to break that chain. Okay? Now, I told you at my talk the earlier, if some friend of mine died for my sin, his death has no value in the eyes of God. Because uh, he is only accounted for himself. But Christ is very unique. Christ is a man who is not worthy of death. He is God took flesh on himself, kept his power as God aside, okay, and walked as man. Now, as far as sin and judgment on him, he is not worthy of death. Therefore, he is a blameless lamb. No one on this earth is a blameless lamb in that sense. So, therefore, his death was, he was very precious and the value was fit that only this kind of person dying, and there's only one such a person in history, that only then he has that unique office that he, he can take away my sin. No other person can do that. Uh, so that, that is the reason, because his, de- his, his being not a s- committed sin makes him that blameless, acceptable lamb before God. That, that is the reason why his position is very unique. That's the reason. I hope I, hope I made it a little... Huh? Okay? <laughs> His position as sinless person who is not worthy of death, that makes him the perfect lamb acceptable to God to receive sin of people. So that, does that mean that we are not accountable for our sins if we just believe in him? Uh, you see, I just mentioned to the gentleman, believe is translated into real acts of faith. There are people who believe just for some various benefits. Maybe you'll get some, uh, some good salary from some foreign organization. There are many people who do that. But God knows the secrets. Okay? But I'm saying if you believe, your life will show. Your life will show. Okay? Judas the Iscariot believed. But really it was not really faith. Afterwards we saw for the sake of 30 pieces of coins, he betrayed his master. Really from beginning he didn't believe. That was a counterfeit belief. Conditional belief. Belief only if things goes well. Okay? So the book of James says, if you believe, your life will show. Okay? It's not belief. I don't mean just say words, you know. I mean say words, you mean it. Okay? I, I mean, in a, in a sincere heart, asking, acknowledging my helplessness because of my sin, 
and asking God to forgive me in the name of his son Jesus that's the only way to receive forgiveness of sin whatever you do there is no other way sorry but uh, if you're saying that Thank God you. took the flesh Thank and bone Oh, excuse okay. me. Think you have put your question forward. The pastor excuse has explained. Me, a... We cannot have another question. That's the first question. Another question, question uh, for the answer. I mean, we can will, I ask, we, please? You can try your. You like to give a, a short one-line comment? One comment. Uh, yes, yes, like I mean, it's a counter question. Uh, as said by pastor that uh, uh, a true believer in Jesus Christ will never become a will never uh, become a rapist tomorrow. but if you see the christians or, or or on a whole you see that every christian do sin so that means you're trying to say that no christian is a true believer of jesus christ you are talking about non believer christians there are many people who have the labels of being christians there are many people having the labels of being christians and they're doing atrocities and they are even the british when they were in india in my personal opinion if it hurts you i don't mind I, i'm sorry but they misrepresented christ in india they were christian name like if I, my name is sharma i'll be called tony and johnny that if i become a christian really the heart is not changed only external don't these are not representative of the faith of jesus there are uh, there is i said at the earlier there is believers christians and there is traditional christians they are not the same these traditional they are just mix up of religions just having the label of christianity that that way you're looking at the people who are traditional they two different things we christians we don't worship idols we don't put photos and bow to it I asked my pastor. We don't. Know. We, I used to do that in the past. I refused when I started reading the Bible and the Torah, and I stopped doing that. I never knew. Uh, I, I used to worship idols. I used to pray to the dead spirits, and God has forgiven, forbidden such things. I never knew. I was also called Christians. I was also called Christians. I, I used to pray to to persons other than the Almighty God. Uh, uh, mediator, a mediator of mediator, a mediator of mediator of mediator, and all these things. Uh, God, only God can forgive sins. And uh, uh, you are you are mixing between a person having a label Christians and a person who is a believer Christians. I'm talking about the Bible Christians, about those who believe in the Bible. Those are dynamic Christians. Are those type of Christian I'm talking about. Okay. So you you maybe have seen people who don't believe in the Bible. They just call Christians. They may be having some Western name or something. Uh, my Thank name you, is uh, now we would uh, now we just ha- allow another three more questions before we wind up those who are standing i would request no further people to come up and queue up because you would not get a chance we have one brother here we'll allow one more brother and i think that he is you have been waiting for a long time okay we'll allow you the third question before we close the session the management has given us 10 minutes uh, so brother zaki you are telling that uh, in the bible somewhere it is written that uh, when jesus came back the disciples were terrified and they were afraid why they were afraid when he is not dead there was a question that when jesus christ peace be upon goes to the upper room where the disciples had gathered there why were they afraid when he was not dead that is the question which i had asked during the talk why were they afraid and the answer is given because they thought he was the spirit they thought he was a spirit but he is not dead you said that's what i'm telling you so they did not know that but he I, is dead okay come tomorrow if you, you die and you come to over here everybody will get scared and run away from you i agree with you i agree with you, you agree i agree with you? with you suppose if i read in the newspaper that this person fell from the 10th floor yeah and you think he is dead but tomorrow if he comes i'm going to get scared but then he tells me when i fell down there was a lorry of hay going i didn't die so it from here say i had heard He had fallen and he died. But when he comes, I bring a doctor, examine him, I check his hand. He's alive. So initially I'll be afraid. But when I check up with him, I'm not afraid. Similarly, here initially, but the disciple is dead. Let me complete the answer. Then you can speak. No problem, brother. I'll give you time. You can come again. You can come to IRF. Let me complete the answer. They thought the Bible says, Gospel of Luke, chapter twenty-four, verse thirty-seven. They were affrighted and terrified, and supposed him to be a spirit. Supposed. Who says that? not dr zakir naik who says that luke they thought him to be a spirit but then he says handle me and see for a spirit has no flesh and bones then they were overjoyed first they were afraid because they thought he was a spirit when he proved to them he was not a spirit they were overjoyed who says that gospel of luke 
the gospel says that Jesus was dead and he was buried and then he comes you said that brother you said that I don't know I'm brother you have asked your question he has given his answer excuse me the, you have, brother you have asked your question the speaker has given his response uh, I think God has given uh, most of the people here a uh, good heart a good mind and they can decide for themselves we are not going to comment on it what the decision of the audience is let them decide for themselves that is the basic premise we had of this friendly uh, discussion so that we come to a better understanding of each other's viewpoints and not fight over it just understand each other's viewpoint in its proper perspective we have two experts who know their job let them give the answers if you know it better tomorrow you hire a big hall and maybe invite someone else and people will come and hear you they are happy hearing you now yes brother you can carry on with the answer so all the statements were from hearsay they thought him to be a spirit because they had heard that he had died heard from hearsay they weren't eye witnesses who says that Gospel of Mark, chapter 14, verse 50. All of them fled at the most critical juncture of the life of JFK. Peace be upon him. They all forsook and left him. Who says that? The gospel says that. They fled. It was from hearsay. And he proved to them by showing his hand that he was not a spirit. And pastor said, and he gave the reason for salvation, the question, two questions posed earlier. And the pastor said that you have to believe in Jesus Christ. Peace be upon him. He has died for your sins. And then after that, you should not sin. I don't get it. That if someone has paid for my sin... And what is the problem in me doing sin? If someone tells me, go to a restaurant, Delhi Darbar, I've paid for your bills, eat as much as you want. And then say, don't have chicken. I say, why? You have paid for my bill, why not have chicken? Don't have mutton. I say, why? That you told me a lie. When you told me that you paid for everything, whatever you have, eat as much as you want for your full life. Now why are you telling me don't have chicken? Don't have mutton? That you told me a lie. So if Jesus Christ peace be upon him paid for our sins, then what's the problem in us raping? What's the problem in us robbing? So this logic, if you understand, it doesn't go into the logical mind of a person. Hope that's the question. Yes, brother. That's the second uh, last question for Pastor Rukni. My question uh, to Mr. Uh, Rukni. As you uh, know, that every country have his uh, criminal law. And Anyone who is doing wrong thing is going to be punished according to the criminal law of the country. And because and even, the, even though if you take up newspaper, you will see a thousands of murders and rapes and lot of things are going on in the world. Suppose, as you said earlier in your speech, in the, in the beginning, that Jesus was already crucified. He was not crucified for his sins, but he was crucified for the sins of human beings. For the sins of Christians. If we believe that Jesus was crucified for all Christians, then what is going to be the situation of the world? Yeah, shall I answer? Complete? Yeah. Uh, it is uh, written that Jesus died for the sins of the whole world, that anyone who believes in him will have the gift of salvation. Not, so it, potentially it is for you and for everybody then who is going to, going to the hand, handle the situation after that if everybody starts believing that yes huh, and I, I can kill you right now here huh, and I can t- tell tomorrow into the court that Mr. Jesus is crucified for my sins mm-hmm. and you cannot testify me <laughs> huh, then can you write on the paper that he, this guy should not be testified as Mr. Jesus is already crucified for him uh, I have answered this question earlier in the book of James in Hindi in Yaqub says if you really believe you will not kill me you will write not kill it. me you write it and give that if Mr. Iftikhar is killing today here huh, and he should not be testified tomorrow in the court of the law of the Indian constitution Yes. Uh, can we, you give me in writing now just a minute uh, uh, I will be believe tomorrow that Mr. Jesus was crucified. I will yes. believe tomorrow. And yes. I will be a perfect Christian. See, there are two things in sin. As I said, there is sin and there is damage of sin. Okay? There, there is sin itself. A simple thing I can tell you. No, See, you are, you are a believer. You are a believer, a perfect believer as a Christian. Huh? Today morning I told my daughter, I, I want to know each and every no, a table from 1 to 20. You read it and I will, I will listen in the evening. 
just to keep me happy she learned everything she kept in mind and repeated in the evening mr zakir is not a christian he is a muslim but he can quote each and every verse from your bible any bible ha huh? and you are a believer you say i am a believer i am this and that i am i love christ but you cannot quote a single line from the bible brother 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 you have to put so <laughs> i said i would i would request you to maintain patience you have to put forward your question rather than passing comments on what the speaker knows or doesn't know that is his right what he okay. knows or doesn't know now, you uh, have to just put forward your question and await an answer i mentioned there there is sin there is sin and there is result of sin okay now for example uh, i uh, uh, a poor man who just survive by little food i am a thief i rob his food and he dies he got no food to eat okay sometime back sometime later some faithful god servant come and tell me you are a thief and you should not do that then i realize i have done a horrible thing which cannot be repaired there is a man died because of my robbing but he reforms me i ask jesus to forgive me my sins and then my destiny is changed my destiny is changed that is true that's a fact it's a promise in the bible it is god's word but can i repair the damage i have killed a man I denied him his food answer is no then the police will catch me and according to the law of the country I may have to be hung because of that yes I I have to bear the consequences of the harm I did but I but my soul is saved because my destiny is changed god has wiped my sin from his presence but there is a, a damage I caused uh, which is so serious and there is a, a price for it in this earth so many sins they so serious i cannot repair it even after becoming a christian there is another situation i do a minor thing let's say i cheat saji uh, and then tomorrow god convicts me I ask him forgiveness god i'm sorry for my sin i have cheated saji uh, saji take your pen back i have cheated you that day that's a minor sin where i can restitute it is possible to restitute but the case where a man died because of my being a horrible person earlier cannot be restituted and there is a law in the country and i have to bear the consequences of that so there is the sin and there is the damage not all damage can be repaired for example if i am alcoholic very heavy drinker all my youth was spent in drinking at the old age uh, some faithful servant of god comes and uh, tell me ask god forgiveness i ask god forgiveness in the name of jesus i receive a free gift of salvation free of charge i haven't worked for it god change my destiny but what happened during all my youth i have been drinking beer and my uh, liver uh, developed fibroid and then slowly slowly i waste and die because of that the damage of sin all my life has damaged my life but thank god my soul is saved see I, I, this is the this is the damage of sin i have done all these years but my soul is saved because i ask forgiveness it's a free gift it's a free gift god take the justice that i deserve out of me and put it on jesus that is the strange the strange exchange that jesus takes it from you and put it on himself nobody is willing to can do that Uh, i hope i answered it i'm not satisfied yes <laughs> yes yes brother this would be the last question for the evening we would request the audience to be seated after the answer for another one or two minutes bear with us for a few minutes more yes brother my name is uh, sunny matthew i am a manpower consultant name of my company is sigma manpower and marketing private limited well uh, the question uh, to dr sakir nayak is or the debate subject what we have today is was christ really crucified asking a counter question is not the answer for the question it's a simple logical theory the subject of today is not whether jesus has um, resurrected or not that subject when you are dealing it on the problem the evidence for um, resurrection which we can find out only from the bible and it is a belief of the christians and as you mentioned you are not believing in Christ, uh, you are not believing uh, bible is a word of god and then you are taking the quotation from bible and proving that and proving that resurrection is not taken place and then saying that is why the crucifixion is not taking place is a good logic 
but when we approaching the subject i personally believe it is not right one another point uh, yeah one the same question, question it's a continuation but one more point on that uh, now it is a historical fact the crucifixion or death of christ is a historical fact where the historians has written it on that a jewish historian called josephus has written about uh, a, about the uh, about the crucifixion of christ and it was not a secret in a rally uh, people has been tortured him and crucified it on that then what happened to christ if christ has not died whether he has hidden somewhere else it has, his body has taken down from the cross and it has been laying down there were people witnessing it on that but how can you deny it on this and the last continuation because i am the last person to question brother, it i'll yeah. answer you question. can ask a new question no no brother, this is you already asked three brother, four questions you already asked i think yeah. two questions you can ask questions. no problem you ask the chairperson to ask no. one more you will no, give brother one yes, brother you will give brother yeah last we chance we will uh, I'll yeah. just answer this question. We will just let him answer the three yeah. questions. In fact, the management has put a limitation. Yeah. Let him answer the three questions. If time permits and the management permits, we okay. might come. One the comment. Brother, 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 Please, Please, I cannot allow you now. Okay. May we have the answers to the questions already posed? The brother posed four questions. He said the topic was, was Christ really crucified? And I posed the question, was he resurrected? And then he said, because he resurrected, he was not resurrected, therefore he is not crucified. You are going in the opposite way. What I was trying to do is kill two birds with one stone. I do not have another debate whether Christ was resurrected or not. Two birds with one stone. If he did not die, he was not crucified. If he did not die, he was not resurrected. Two birds with one stone. So even if you remove the word resurrection, yet the arguments remain the same. And you can have the video cassette later on when it's released. First I said, if a person doesn't die, he's not crucified. And then I went to say that for resurrection also death is required. So I'm killing two birds with one stone trying to prove that Jesus Christ, peace be upon, did not die. If he did not die, he was not crucified. If he did not die, how can he be resurrected? I am killing two birds with one stone. But I am sticking to the topic. I am not going away from the topic. Because both these things are important. According to Paul, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 14, that, and if Christ did not die and rise, our preaching is vain and your faith is vain. So I am killing two birds with one stone. You can refer to the cassette. You ask the next question that historians have said, Jewish historian, that he has been crucified. Do you know, brother, how much of material has been written on Christ has been really crucified? Double the material is written that he was not crucified. Historical accords. You can come to IRF. <laughs> I can quote Venturi. Venturi, a German philosopher. He said, St. Paulus, I can give you how many names you can give, I'll give you double the quantity names. Of historians, not Muslims, Christian, non-Muslims, I'll give the names. The fourth question. If Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, did not die, what happened to him? Was he put below the earth, etc.? I feel you didn't hear my talk and my rebuttal and my question and session. I made it very clear in Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse 157. They didn't kill him, neither did they crucify him. It was only made to appear so. Next verse, Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse 158, it says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised him up alive. I've said that. That he was raised up alive unto himself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised Jesus Christ peace be upon him unto himself. It is even mentioned in Surah Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 55, that he was raised up alive. And he'll be coming again in the second coming. So all your four questions have been answered. And the pastor said, what I have got from his answer which he gave earlier. Every time I meet a Christian, I get a new answer. He said that certain damages cannot be repaired. He said that. It is on video. That means, for certain sins, Jesus Christ cannot pay. What I get to understand, what I get to understand, every time I meet a new Christian, I get a new ideology of Christianity. That for small sins, Christ has paid. Peace be upon him. For big sins, he has not paid. That's what I understand. That's what I understand. Yes, brother, you had some comment. Brother, just you can just ask your question instead of a comment. Well, because comment. one, in his five minutes, there are yet... Two, three minutes left. 
I will allow him to answer only in the three minutes, not to five minutes. Okay. Yes, brother. Quickly your question, quickly the answer, within three minutes. Okay. Uh, now the entire argument which you have given based on the biblical quotings. And when actually the subject, was the Christ as really crucified, what you have there to talk from the Quran? Quran, when you are saying, if you are saying a statement and if you are repeating a statement, that's not an argument. I say there is a God and I say 20 times there is a God, that's not an argument. Argument required subsequent support. So what support you can give from Quran for Christ as not crucified other than that of the statement? I expect a reply not to get the clap from the audience but for an, a non-Muslim can understand and getting of a clap is simple but under, making others understanding is difficult. So not to get a clap but to, make, to me understand on that. The brother asked a very good question that if you make a statement, it doesn't become a fact. It should be from authentic source. And I do agree. If I quote from the Quran, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was not crucified, you need not agree. Why? Because according to you, the Quran is not authentic. I've got no problem. But for the Muslims, it's authentic. They say it's the word of God. For them, it is sufficient proof. If I say anything from the Bible, what happened to Christ? It may not be proof for the Muslims, but for the Christians it will be. Do you agree the Bible to be the word of God or not? You agree? Good, he agrees. So a proof from the Bible, Jesus Christ was not crucified. So why do you require historical proof? Do you think historical proof is superior to God's word? Don't clap, don't clap, please. He doesn't want you to clap. He wants to understand. It's a matter of faith. It's a matter of, uh, it's the proof should be, I mean, it's a matter of faith. That's why it was required. That's right, I'm saying, as long as you're convinced, I am not here to convince the non-Christians. To convince the non-Christian, I can give historical proof, we can have a new debate. If a non-Christian comes and tells me Ro that he... quoted the Bible from here and there is not a proof for me. Who quoted? Ro I mean, the quotation which you have quoted is right, but it has picked up from a wrong place which has mentioned That's on a wrong right. incidence. Brother has led allegation, I have quoted rightly, but out of context. You give the context. No problem. It's a friendly discussion for understanding. Come to IRF, you give the context and we'll discuss it. You're most welcome. I'll come and meet you then. Jazakallah uh, We thank God Almighty for making this evening of understanding each other's viewpoints between two major faiths of this world possible for all of us present here. We would like to thank the India Gospel Mission and the Islamic Research Foundation for getting together to organize this program. I, I would like to personally thank Pastor Rokni, Pastor Saji, Dr. Zakir, and all of us present That's here today. Jazakamullah Khairan. Okay. That's May God no. reward See, uh, all of you. Uh, uh, the, the law...